first ammo for the Logitech 1000, which is this one. I am actually upgrading from the 1000, which you I have, uh, which you can see in my other video. So this demo is going to be strictly on this remote right here, and uh, I'll show you uh, basically how this remote works, and you can get you can basically draw the comparisons from uh, this remote to uh, the 1000. All right, so here's the remote. Pretty much the same thing uh, as my Logitech 1000. I'm not going to go into great detail, but I did go into detail about how they reverse these buttons here, which is kind of um, odd to do. Uh, they also added these little groove markers to locate these uh, programmable buttons on the left and right. But pretty much the uh, look of the remote is still the same. Nothing's really changed. But uh, this is the screen. And uh, I noticed a lot of people online have been like trying to like videotape this and their screens are insanely blurry so um, I'm using actually a high definition Canon 1080p camcorder so I'm, uh, hopefully this is clear enough for you guys um, but okay so pretty much let me get into the gist of this remote Um, for one thing I'm going to do real quick is I'm actually going to change the remote settings on here, the backlight, because it keeps going off. I'm going to put it all the way up to a minute. Alright. Oh, you know what? One other thing I forgot to mention. Another difference between the 1000 and the 1100. Very small item. I know everybody been waiting for this one, but they actually put the clock on this one. Uh, the 1000 was supposed to have a clock, and it was supposed to be even be updated with a clock, with a firmware update. Logitech abandoned it, because I believe there was an issue with the code to make that clock work, and it kept crashing the remote software. Who would have guessed a clock actually crashes a remote? But uh, I think that's why they didn't include it in on the 1000. Like I said, they probably fixed the issue and put it in the 1100. But anyway, let's get down to the business. Now, suppose you're actually wanting to watch TV. Um, you would basically hit watch an HD TV. If you wanted to watch a Blu-ray, you would just hit watch a Blu-ray. If you wanted to watch a DVD, you just watch a Blue DVD. Now, to program this remote, you have to make sure all your devices right here are programmed. If you have your devices in here, then you can program your activities. Now, I did make a video on how to program these remotes. Check my other video to see how you do it. That also goes into detail on how you program lighting as well. You have your toolbar up here, slideshow, which is just for photos, your devices, which show all your devices that you have in your system, and you have to program all these. And if you have any questions about programming, you have to watch my other video. I'm not going to go into detail on how to do that in this video. Um, if we go back, the remote settings have volume, remote assistant, time, and backlit. Backlight is basically, obviously, the backlight volume is for the remote, for the sounds it makes, and time is to set your time. Remote Assistant, I have checked off because I usually don't like to see this thing pop up saying, Hey, oh, is all your stuff on? Did it work alright? I don't need to know that. If I have trouble, I'll usually just go right up to this help button that slides in, and it says, Did power off? Did that fix the problem? And nine times out of the ten, yes, it did. So we're going to just say yes and be done with that. Now, if I want to watch uh, a, a TV, for example, I'm going to hit this button right here. Now, basically, what it does is, in my system, I have my receiver down there, my cable box is right there, and my TV is right there. What it's actually going to do is, it's actually going to turn on my receiver, switch it to the right input, turn on my cable box, and turn on my TV and switch that to the correct input all with one button. So I don't really have to hit anything, but I had to program it that way, and that's why the programming, you have to make sure it's done right or none of the stuff is really going to work. So you have to take a little bit of time in the beginning, program it right, and then sure enough, you're going to actually be able to use this remote with not a problem. Um, if you have any questions on how to program, I can help you out, but my video should basically go over um, how to get through the software. And the 1000 to the 1100 of software is pretty much the same, but I'll show you the differences with what the 1100 added and what you can do in the software. So here's the remote again. So we're going to hit watch TV. And as you can see, the remote start, the activity starting up, and you'll see the cable box in the center, the receiver to the right, and my HDTV to the left. 
And now it says uh, keep your remote pointed at your t your system. I have the remote extender, so I can have this remote pointed anywhere. It doesn't matter, which is very nice. Now let's uh, I'll take this remote away and I'll show you basically what it looks like now. As you can see down at the bottom left, the rem uh, the receiver's on, and we'll move g gently over here. You can see the cable box on. And you can see that the TV's on. So, Diane, good evening, and this is it. The final 10 miles on that stretch, that long, painful journey from Somalia that's basically in Kenya. So many families have left one how you watch HDTV on this remote. Now, let's bring the remote back into focus here. Uh, this is the live TV. I have actually customized. This is one of the new features. You can actually put icons on the left and right here and label them. So I have like a back icon, my DVR little window icon, aspect. I have my exit button. I even have like a little like info and my guide button. So if I hit guide, the guide will come up on the screen. As you can see, it changed right there. Um, this is another feature I always really loved about this remote. If I go up to favorites, it uh, slides in my favorites. I can hit the, the page down buttons now down here, and I can slide through all my icons. These icons are available at, uh, I think it's harmonyicons.com or icons harmony. Just do a Google search for that. And this guy created all these harm, uh, icons for these harmony remotes. They're really amazing, and it makes my life so much easier. And if you just hit one, it'll send the command to the cable box. As you can see, it's already on 510. So I could actually hit a Discovery Channel, and as you can see, it's changing the channel automatically for me. And I just hit that Favorites button. So it's very cool. So this is basically the main screen that you have when you're watching your TV. Um, you have your play button, your record button if you have a DVR, fast forward, rewind, stuff like that. If you want your numeric keypad, you can go here or your uh, star for other functions here and you can also get to your devices in this menu as well. Now as you can see, as I'm clicking through this stuff, it's coming in pretty fast because this remote is flash based so it's really fast compared to the 1000 where you would hit a button and have to wait. Um, another feature I want to show you, the remote that really hasn't changed since the 1000 but I love it, is the lighting control. So if you want to watch, for example, a uh, Blu-ray disc and you want it to basically dim the lights and uh, turn on all your equipment, all you have to do is program it. Um, into the remote control the lighting activity which I have show in my other video and after that's all programmed you can just hit this button which I programmed already watch a BD lights and that's just letting you know that I have this activity programmed with the lighting control and when you hit that you'll notice that these lights behind me you can see it in a reflection right here once everything gets going my things will change all that all the various equipment will change and the lights will start dimming. Pretty cool, isn't it? Alright, so now that the lights are and everything are back on and everything's great, uh, I want to show you basically um, an in-depth look at uh, the uh, remote extender that I bought. I didn't show you this in my other video, but um, let me go in close and basically show you what they look like. Um, this is the uh, device right down here. This is the uh, Logitech remote extender. There's uh, four cables in the back of it, as you can see. Those uh, are IR bugs, and this one right here is the power cable. And it basically uses a USB cable, which is hard to see, but it's at the top here. And you can basically disconnect all these cables, and the power cable can disconnect right here too, so it's easy to get out of your system. They thought, thought of that, at least. And basically, you, when you update your remote and you have this in your system, you're going to need this every time you update your remote. So it's kind of annoying, but you need to update this first, then update your main remote. 
and obviously this is the Logitech Blu-ray, uh, not Blu-ray, Logitech Bluetooth adapter for the PlayStation 3. Definitely a requirement to work with the Blu-ray, the PS3, because like I said, the, like, well I said, like people said before, the 1000 doesn't support Bluetooth, neither does the 1100. So, just letting you know that these little cables right here, they run out into my system, and if you see it back there, you can see them against my wall. And they run all the way over to these little bad boys on my system. They're little IR bugs, and they just stick right onto the IR sensor. And they, co they come in each, cape, each pair that come out of that, uh, each cable that comes out of that unit has two of these little bugs on it. And you can just stick them right on the IR sensor. Now, usually companies tell you where they are, the IR sensors, so I can easily just, like, stick it right there. Now, I found that some of these stick, some of these don't. If they don't stick, I would definitely recommend getting some high-strength double-stick tape. But as you can see, I have them on all, all my devices now. I have one here, and I have one all the way at the bottom here. And these uh, little bugs, even though I don't really need them, because for some odd reason, and I want to really dive into this and understand how this thing works, but how I think it works is on each side of these... Uh, on each side of this device, there's like two or three IR uh, beams that come out. They just shoot out, and they shoot in all sorts of directions. And in my case, they bounce off all the walls in my living room, and they can control all my devices remotely without using these cables. These little IR bugs are more useful if you have your equipment behind a closed door or something like that. If they aren't in a closed door, test it without the IR bugs. You may be able to get it to work without them. But hey, you know what? You can't be too safe. I just decided to put them on most of my equipment. But that's a brief overview of the uh, Harmony Extender. Uh, I would definitely recommend getting it because trust me, when I didn't have it, it's really annoying just holding your remote, pointing it at your entertainment unit. And if you have a big, wide spread of electronics, it's not going to be easy. You might miss a command and then you have to go into the help menu. Just save yourself time and go get it. Now it's $100 to get the system, but in this day and age, go on the internet, find the best price and get it. So this is a brief overview of the uh, Logitech Harmony 1100. It's not as in-depth as my first video, but I figured you can watch all the videos and basically understand the whole concept of these remotes. But, uh, really great remote. I really like the design. It feels good in your hands. They finally fixed all those little issues that everyone's been complaining about. Um, overall, I would, I would recommend this remote to anyone. Uh, just, you just got to be willing to shell out the money for it, that's all. But in my system where I have over 16, 17 devices to control, uh, I wouldn't say this is a requirement, I just would say this is kind of a necessary piece of equipment you should have if you have over 10 devices. Even for people who have like 5 or 6 devices, it can't hurt. If you only have 1 or 2 devices, you should probably stick with one of the lower end remotes like the 890, 900, or even the Harmony 1 which is actually supposed to be a very good remote. So, this is the review on the Logitech Harmony 1100. If you have any questions, leave some posts or contact me. I'm sure to get back to you. All right? Thanks. Bye.